So con the, the concept and the topic of this talk is C4 models as code. In order to explain this stuff, I need to kind of backtrack a little bit, and I need to kind of reverse to where we are today. So architecture diagramming is typically horrendous. Let's just put that out there. Uh, the whole Agile manifesto has, has killed diagramming to some extent. You hear lots of people saying, well, just use a whiteboard, values in the conversation, et cetera, et cetera. When I run architecture diagram workshops, I get some terrible looking diagrams. People don't use UML anymore, and people don't want to use UML anymore, so that's kind of another issue here. Uh, why? A whole bunch of reasons, of course. So given that people don't want to use UML these days, my advice is really this. If you want to use boxes and arrows type diagrams to describe your software architecture, at least try to do so in a structured manner. And make sure your diagram notation is, is self-describing to some extent. And that's really the whole concept behind my C4 model for visualizing software architecture. If you want more information about this, you can go to c4model.com. But here's the quick two and a half minute abridged introduction. So the C4 model is essentially a hierarchical set of architecture diagrams at different levels of abstraction. System context diagram, you zoom in, you show containers. Uh, by container, I don't mean Docker here. This is nothing to do with Docker, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm basically mean applications and data stores. You zoom into an application, you show components. You zoom into a component, you show code. So it's a hierarchical set of diagrams, essentially. The concept here is diagrams as maps. So like Google Maps, you want different levels of zoom to tell different stories to different audiences. That's the concept. And this allows you to navigate and jump off into large and complicated code bases, of course. So the two diagrams I'm going to introduce very quickly because I'm going to show you them during the demos. The first one is called a system context diagram. A system context diagram basically shows you the system you are describing or designing and how it fits into the world around it in terms of users and other software systems. So in order to draw a system context diagram, you need to answer these questions. What's the scope of the system we are documenting or designing or describing? So what features sit inside the system boundary? And what features sit outside of the system boundary in other systems in the environment? Uh, who is using this system? So who are the roles, the actors, the users, the personas? What sort of things are they doing? And what system integration points do we need to support? OK, so if you can answer those questions, you can draft up a system context diagram. So this is a system context diagram from one of the workshops I ran a while ago. The red box represents the software system that was being designed here, the financial risk system. This group has correctly identified a couple of different types of users, and they have identified a bunch of external integration points, other software systems. Those are the black boxes. So that's my system context diagram. You'll notice in the corner there's a nice diagram key. There's lots of text on here. It's a nice, understandable diagram, hopefully. So now what we do is we do the Google Maps pinch to zoom into that red box, and we drop down to level two. Level two is a container diagram. Again, not Docker. I'm sorry. I got the name first. Irrelevant, I know. Uh, in, order to, um, in order to draw this diagram, it's a different set of questions. So the questions are, what are the major technology building blocks? In other words, what is the set of applications and data stores we need to put together to build this software system? What are the responsibilities of these units? And how do they talk to one another? Answer those questions, and you can draft up a container diagram. So now we've zoomed into that red box, the system boundary. We're still showing people, and we're still showing the external systems around the edge. And now we're showing applications and data source, what I'm calling containers, that sit inside the software system boundary. So here we can see we have a couple of JavaScript React apps. There's a Java Spring app at the top, and a bunch of uh, Java things, uh, command line apps at the bottom, and some data stores in the middle. Responsibilities, tech building blocks, inter uh, interactions, integrations, again, hopefully a nice, understandable diagram now we're targeting developers and architects, whereas the previous diagram is much more broader in its audience, of course. The C4 model is notation independent, so you can use boxes and arrows with a self-describing notation like you would use on a, on a map. A key or legend is a good way to solve that. Or you can use something like UML if you want to. And the concept here is a, a common set of abstractions is much more powerful than a standardized notation. So really, the C4 thing is, a set of abstractions, and a set of hierarchical diagram types. That's the C4 in a nutshell. So tooling. What's the tooling story around all of this stuff? Well, most people, when they're drawing software architecture diagrams, they stick to the tools they know and love. V8, 
Physio, Draw.io, Diagrams.net, Lucidchart, Gliffy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Who's using these tools? Please stop. <laughs> right, so I don't recommend these tools for crafting up software architecture diagrams. And I'm going to justify this. There's a bunch of reasons around this. First of all, they're just general purpose tools. So with a system context diagram, a system context diagram generally only shows people and software systems. Because Visio does not know you are crafting up a C4 system context diagram, you can add more boxes and you can add components and other things that don't exist in the C4 language or grammar. And the tool won't stop you doing that. So that's kind of thing number one. Yeah, have you ever tried to export these things to textual formats? You often get this horrible XML file, you stick it into source code control because that's a good thing to do, but it's just a mess. If you make, if you like change the name of one of the boxes, where is it? It's all intermingled. So that's another issue. If you want two diagrams, let's say a system context diagram and a container diagram, and you use a tool like Visio, you need two sheets, two tabs. With a C4 model, you generally repeat elements across multiple levels of detail. So if you're drawing a context diagram, you have a bunch of people, you zoom in to show containers, you still have those same people. You have to make sure that you rename all the people across all the diagrams where they use, otherwise your diagrams drift out of sync. And again, a, a, a general purpose tool can't help you with that issue. They're hard to diff, same thing as before. Oh, I changed the name of a box. Sure, thanks. You can't automate these tools, so there is a limited amount of automation you can do with things like diagrams.net. You can feed it a CSV file and it can generate a diagram for you, but it's quite hard to use. But it's hard to kind of integrate these tools with your CI CD pipeline. And if you want to automatically generate diagrams from your Azure environment or your AWS environment, or you want to go and use static analysis and reflection techniques to go and find all of the components that sit inside your Java code base. You can't do that with tools like Visio. Yeah, these things are a pain to use. So when I wanted to craft up some little example diagrams for this talk, I, I ran into this situation. Now this diagram on the left looks fine, but actually the arrow is not straight. It's like one pixel out. Really annoying, because then you kind of nudge the box one way and it's still one pixel out the other way. And so I, I shouldn't have to be dealing with this sort of mess. So back in the heady days of 2020, when we were all doing other things, uh, the ThoughtWorks tech radar blipped diagrams as code. You can go and find this in the, uh, in the old edition, of course. Diagrams as code is basically, instead of using a tool to create a diagram, you are writing a bunch of text and feeding it through a tool, and it's the tool that's generating your diagram automatically. These things are nice because as developers, we like text, we have tooling to support text, text is very version controllable, diffable, et cetera, et cetera, and we can integrate it into our CI, CD build pipelines. So there's a ton of great stuff associated with diagrams as code. The one people kind of generally stumble upon first when they're looking for diagrams as code plus C4 is called something called C4 plant UML. So this is a set of macros for the plant UML tooling that basically give you a domain specific language, a C4 domain specific language to craft up an architecture diagram. So here's an example. We can see that we have a, a person and a software system and a relationship. And this little bit of text gives you that picture. And that's great, but if you want to now create a container diagram, you want to create a second diagram, you now have to have another second text file. Now, there are some limited abilities to do include, so you can say, put all of my common elements, my people and software systems into a shared file and include that shared file from my, my multiple plant UML definitions. That kind of doesn't, doesn't work as well as it should. We can use the global search and replace tools in our IDEs to make sure that when we rename something, we rename it everywhere, but that's error prone. So that's the issue with the diagrams as code tools. You want two diagrams, you need two text files, many of the, uh, many of the same problems that apply. I want us to shift the narrative as an industry away from diagramming <coughs> and towards modeling. And by towards modeling, I mean back towards modeling because we used to do modeling in the late 90s, early 2000s. Rational Rose, Rational Software Architect, anybody familiar with these tools? Right, so there was a lot of good stuff here, but the implementation left something to be desired, and of course, coupled with waterfall ways of working, it died off. But modeling is super powerful. With a model, you create a single definition of your person, of your software system, and you reuse it across a bunch of different diagrams. 
you rename that one definition, magic happens and all your, all your diagrams are magically in sync. So, lockdown time. I live in Jersey, I get stuck in Jersey. Jersey's nine miles by five. There's lots of surfing I can do when the weather's nice. So I did lots of surfing, I learned how to make nice coffees, I went on lots of cycle rides, but there's only so much activity I can do. So I sat down and I wrote a whole bunch of new tooling to do this type of stuff. And the heart of this is something called the Structurizer DSL. So this is a domain-specific language that I created. It's a text-based domain-specific language specifically to craft up models um, based upon the C4 model. And this is all open source, and I'm going to show you a bunch of tooling associated with it. What I'm doing here is instead of creating multiple text files to create multiple diagrams, I'm generating multiple diagrams off a single definition. So this is really going back to modeling and having a set of views on top of a model. That's essentially what I'm doing here. So this is really models as code, and of course it's C4 models as code because this is specifically focused on the C4 model. So with that in mind, let's jump into some demos. So I have a bunch of tooling. So the Structurizer DSL is the text-based um, tooling that we're going to primarily focus on, but we need something to kind of render this thing. So I have a bunch of other tooling called Structurizer Lite. Structurizer Lite is available complete for free. It's not open source, but it will be next year. And it's available as a Spring Boot app you can just download, or it's available as a prepackaged Docker image. So I'm going to use a Docker image. I'm going to start up Lite. It's just a Docker image. You point it to a directory on your local machine, do a standard volume mount and a standard port map. So I'm going to start up Structurizer Lite against a folder on my desktop called Yao, which does not currently exist. This is my desktop. So we're going to boot this up. Docker's going to churn away. There we go. So that folder has now been created. And inside this folder is a file called workspace.dsl. I'm going to open up in Visual Studio Code. And this is the Structurizer DSL. So what we're doing here is we're defining a workspace. A workspace is really a wrapper for two things, a model and a set of views. So here's our model. In our model, we are defining a person with the name user. Original on it, I know. We're defining a software system with the name software system. Again, please come up with better names than I do. We're assigning these two things to a couple of variables. And then we're using this syntax here to say we want a relationship between the user and the software system with a description of users. Again, please use a better description for that relationship. So that's my model. It's a set of elements and relationships between those elements. Then we have a set of views. And what we're doing here is we're going to define a system context view for that software system. Ignore this, it's just a, a diagram identifier. We're going to say include star. What include star here does is it says, right, you want a, a system context diagram for that software system. And the star bit basically says, go and find everything else that has a link to that software system, either inbound or outbound, the afferent and efferent couplings. And we're going to apply automatic layout. So this is my non-visual textual definition in that file has been created for us. If I now go to my web browser and go to localhost 8080, always agree with the T's and C's. This page will disappear when it all goes open source, don't worry. And there's my diagram. So, so Structurizer Lite is a, it's a, a, a Java server-side app that renders a bunch of diagrams in a web browser. And here we have two gray boxes and an arrow. <laughs> Thank you. It's amazing, isn't it? All the technology we have available, and I've got two gray boxes and an arrow. So let me dig into this a bit deeper. So I've specified that we want to use automatic layout here. I personally don't like automatic layout. So I'm going to disable this, go back here, refresh. And now a bunch more buttons appear on the UI. And we can do things like change the paper size. We can move boxes around. We can add some vertices. We can move the text, change the line routing, et cetera, et cetera. This little button will save. So where's the layout information? Because the layout information is not here. The layout information is in this file, which was being created for us. It's a JSON document. And this is actually the data structure used by all this tooling under the hood. And if we scroll down here, we can see that this has the x, y coordinates. So now what you do is you craft up your DSL file. You render it how you want to. You shut Structurizer Lite down. You check both these files, in fact, this whole folder into source code control. 
with the scripts to boot up Structure as Light. Again, this is all free, it's on Docker Hub. And now anybody on your team can boot up and get this same set of diagrams on demand. Because this is a text file, it's diffable, it's version controllable, et cetera, et cetera. So let me go and close this one. And I'm going to put automatic layout back on, because I want to show you a bunch of other stuff. I'm going to go left, right, go back here, refresh. So there's our diagram again. So who likes gray boxes? No one. So let's fix gray boxes. How do we make nicer boxes? Uh, this tooling has the concept of themes. There's a default theme, which will change your boxes and make them different shades blue. So that's a simple way to get some uh, nice colors and things. Otherwise, uh, there's another way to do this. So I go back to my gray boxes. If I enable tooltips and hover the mouse over an element, every element has a set of text-based tags. Uh, the, the person element has an element tag and a person tag, and the software system element has an element tag and a software system tag. This is really like HTML and CSS. You know when you create a div and you add, add a bunch of CSS classes and then do CSS styling? Same sort of thing. So how do we make all of these boxes a different color? Well, what we can do is we can create a set of styles and we create an element style for the element tag. And we're going to say we want the background to be green, because that's the Yale London colors. R, red, G. Let's try that. There we go. And we can change the foreground color to white. So how do we change the person to a person shape? Well, same deal. So all we can do is we can go element style for the person tag shape person. And we're done. Now, one of the nice things about all of this tooling is that it generates your diagram key automatically based upon the styles and all of the tags. So one of my recommendations around the C4 model diagrams is make sure you have a diagram key to describe the notation you're using. This tooling does all of that for you, which is quite cool. So imagine. We're done. We've got our system context diagram, and everything is good. And we want to start drilling down and showing containers. How do we do that? Well, what we do is we go back up here to our software system definition. We open up a set of curly braces, and we say, right, let's have a web app. This is going to be a C4 model container with the name web application. Again, please find better names. Uh, we're going to have a database. This is just going to be called database. And we're going to do, we're going to say the user has a link to the web application who uses. And the web application has a link to the database. Let's say reads from and writes to. So if I save this and refresh, what's going to happen? Any guesses? More boxes? More boxes? Nope. Yeah, no web app. No web app. The answer is nothing. So what I've done is I've crafted a bunch of elements in my model, but this, the model's non-visual. I need to add some views in order to get these things onto diagrams. So because we've added containers, we need to add a container diagram to showcase those things. So how do we do that? We go here. We copy-paste this block. We change system context to container because we want to create a container diagram. We want to create a container diagram for that software system. And we'll change this diagram key, just an identifier. Include star now says, Include all of the containers inside that software system and include things linked to that software system. So now, if we save and refresh, so here's our diagram before. There's a little plus here. We can double click this, and now we've got drop down to level two, and we can see the container diagram showing our user using our web application and our web application using the database. Cylinders, like let's make the database a cylinder. Let's look at the, uh, tool, the, look at the tool tips. The database element has an element tag and a container tag, but the web app also has an element tag and a container tag. So I can't just change the shape of all containers. I need to add a specific tag for my database. How do we do that? We go here, we open up a set of curly braces, tags, database, if I can type and spell properly, of course. We go down here. And we create an element style for the database tag. Shape, what do you think shape is? Cylinder, yeah. It's not database, it's cylinder. There we go. So that's now changed. And again, it's popped up in the diagram key. Don't repeat yourself. Dry. This is something we always talk about when we're doing software development. But I've done exactly that, haven't I, in the relationships. So I've defined. A bunch of relationships here, and these two are kind of the same. And this is duplication. 
So how do I fix the duplication? The answer is delete one of them. You have to delete the right one. If I delete this one and go back here, so these two relationships are the ones that are defined in this file. But if I go back to my context diagram, that arrow still exists, even though it's not defined in the definition. This is a feature of this tooling called implied relationships. So because the user has a relationship with the web application and the web application sits inside that higher abstraction, the software system, there is an implied link between the user and the software system, so the tooling adds it for you. And this is all customizable, and you can build your own strategies for doing this, et cetera, et cetera. So let me see where we are. We've done all that. We've done the diagram key. Perfect. So uh, other things you can do with this tooling, PNG exports, SVG exports. There's also a single page um, export as well, so you can boot this up. Single page HTML page, and it's got all the diagrams, uh, and they'll navigate all with the diagram keys, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a bunch of stuff you can do with Structurizer like tooling. Let me now shut down this example we just crafted and start up light against another example. So if any of you have been to c4model.com, you'll notice there's a bunch of diagrams for an internet banking system. Uh, this is the internet banking system example. And I want to boot this up to show you a bunch of things. So again, we're just going to start structure as a light. So here are my internet banking system examples. Uh, let me try and go full screen. So this is my system landscape diagram, my context diagram, my container diagram. So something you can do here is, you know when you're trying to describe an architecture, you might want to do it like you would in PowerPoint, like show a box at a time. So this tooling has support for uh, crafting up animations, so you can kind of tell that story. And you can export the frames and, and have uh, different images per animation frame. One of the things I recommend when people are drawing the C4 model diagrams is you have lots of descriptive text, both on the lines, the arrows, and both inside the boxes. And, and although I really like this, many people are a bit jarred by the amount of text. And particularly when they do a presentation, they think that this text kind of detracts from what you're trying to tell, the story you're trying to tell. So this tooling, because this is essentially a view of some elements in the model, uh, this tooling gives the ability to toggle off things like the description and the metadata. So in Visio, how do you do this in Visio? You craft up your diagram, and then you copy it in the, in the file explorer, open it back up, and then you double click in every box and remove all the text and recenter all, all, of the, all of the text. This tooling does all that for you, so you can choose which version of the detail that you want. So that's a really nice feature here. So that's my Structurizer Lite tooling. The Structurizer DSL is rendering tool independent, which I think is a really nice, powerful feature. So let me shut down Structurizer Lite and boot up this thing here. So this thing here is uh, called C4Viz. This is all open source. It's all on GitHub. Uh, this is nothing to do with me, but they, they built this tool, and it um, supports and integrates the Structurizer DSL. So I'm going to boot up the C4Viz tool against the same exact same workspace DSL file for the internet banking example. We're going to open up a new tab, and we're going to go here. So here we have the same diagrams uh, rendered with a different tool and rendered in a different format. So this is actually um, a bunch of plant UML versions of those same diagrams rendered in another uh, browser-based tool. And this one is also interactive. So from the landscape diagram, you can click, go down to the context diagram. Then you can click the system in the context diagram, go down to containers, et cetera, et cetera. So this is another nice tool um, if you want to have a, a different way to render your diagrams. So that's option one here. Uh, let me shut that one down. And I'm going to boot up another one called the Structurizer Site Generator. This is another open source tool. It's written by a company called Avizi, um, who are based in Arnhem in the Netherlands. And this is, uh, this is a set of tooling that takes a slightly different spin. It does support uh, diagrams, but it does something a little bit different. I'm hoping this is going to say, you can now start browsing this website at localhost 8080. And you should have plugged my power adapter in to make this go faster. Let's just see what happens if we go to it. Yeah, it's not working yet. We'll come back to that one in a second when, it, when it's booted up. So the other thing I want to show you uh, with regards to uh, these diagrams being uh, rendering tool agnostic. So there's also a bunch of tooling I built called the Structurizer CLI. This is, again, all open source. It's all on GitHub. 
And the, the open source CLI basically allows you to do a bunch of stuff with your workspace. And one of the features it, it supports is the ability to export diagrams to different diagrams as tool formats. So if I start up the Structurizer CLI, I've got the local version installed here, but there is a, a Docker version as well. I'm going to say I want to export the uh, views contained in, let's use the example we just created, uh, which is the Yao example workspace.dsl. And we're going to choose format, 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 uh, plant UML. So what this is going to do is basically run a bunch of tooling, and it's going to generate to you uh, a number of plant UML files based upon the views that you define in your workspace. So now we can take these things, we can put it into my clipboard. I'm going to do this in, in incognito mode for reasons you'll see in a second. Yep. Watch all the ads pop up. So this is an export of that same Yao workspace. This is the legend, so it generates you the diagram legend. And if I open up this one, this will be the actual diagram itself. There we go. So this is another rendering of that same diagram that we had running in Structurizer Lite. And there's a whole bunch of other formats that this tooling supports. Let me see if this generator's booted up yet. No, nope, unfortunately not. I'm going to go to another page, uh, which is available at structurizer.com slash DSL. This is like a DSL demo page. You get a little text editor on the left and a set of diagrams on the right. I'm going to go here, take our little example we were building, and paste it into that, click render, and we get diagrams we had before. Let me hide this. So now we can say, uh, what do the plant UML diagrams look like? So this, this web page basically embeds the CLI, and it gives you the ability to kind of trial this tooling out and all the export formats without installing any tooling yourself. So this is a plant UML version of that container diagram that we created before. Uh, this tooling will also export to C4 plant UML. Uh, C4 plant UML by, by default gives you this kind of blue boxes and arrows and the automatically generated diagram key. You have some control over this by adding a view property. So I can go properties, C4, yeah, C4 plant UML dot tags true. Now if I click render and click render here, now we have a different version of that C4 plant UML diagram. This now respects all of the styles and the tags and things we created in our little example. So that's the C4 plant UML support. There's also support for Mermaid. Uh, so Mermaid's interesting because GitHub uh, just su started supporting rendering Mermaid in GitHub readme files, which is quite cool. So there's a Mermaid exporter. And if you really want to get fancy, there's an exporter for the graphis dot format. So we can take this, we can open up uh, something like viz.js. We can paste in our example, and that will generate, again, another a version of essentially that same diagram. Uh, so those are all of the different things. And there's a way you can customize all of those um, uh, different diagram export formats. So let me go back here. I'm going to shut that down because it didn't finish starting up for some reason. I love it when Docker doesn't work properly. So I'm going to start up Structurizer Lite against another example I have here. Because one of the questions I get with all of the C4 model and the tooling is, well, how does this work with real systems if you've got scale or complexity? Because all my example diagrams have like six boxes and they look very simple. But this is not the real world, of course. So here is an example I crafted earlier. Let's go back into Structurizer Light. So imagine we have uh, some sort of a microservice-based architecture that looks like a distributed monolith like we have here. So imagine we have a user using a web app and then a whole bunch of services <laughs> sitting behind uh, the web app. And what I've done here is I've said that every service is, is basically made up of a, an API, like a, a web-facing API, and some sort of database. So here we've got eight services, all different colors. And this diagram kind of works. But as we add more services, this diagram would get more complicated. So what options do we have for dealing with this complexity? Rather than have one diagram showing all eight services, why don't we create eight diagrams, each focusing on one single service? And that's exactly what we can do. So here is a service one container diagram. 
So what this is, it's the same diagram as before, but we, we've restricted our scope to service one, things coming into service one, and things coming out of service one. So again, the afferent and efferent couplings. The service two diagram is exactly the same, the service three diagram, so on and so on. So again, with a tool like Visio, how do you do this? We craft up your master version, which looks horrible, and then you start copying and pasting versions of this into different sheets and you get in a horrendous mess. Because the Structurizer DSL is um, it's model-based, it's a model-based domain-specific language, it makes it very trivial to craft up those partial views. So here is the workspace. So we have our, our web application. This is my service one. So uh, the service one here is a grouping of an API and a database. And I've just repeated the same thing for two, three, four, five. It's a very boring example, all, all the links between them. This is my all containers example. So because all of these containers sit inside that software system, we're basically saying show all of them and all the links. That's why you get that larger diagram. This is the service one version here. So the service one version is still a container diagram. It's still showing us C4 containers. And what we're doing is we're showing service, oh, sorry, we're showing service one and we're using this syntax to say show things coming into service one, the afferent couplings, and things going out of service one, the efferent couplings. And we just repeat that same text for all of the other services that we want to generate these things for. This is also um, supported, by the way, so if I copy paste this, go back to my Structurizer DSL demo page, put this in here, click render, we'll get the same diagram I just showed you in Structurizer Lite, but if I go to plant UML, we get the same thing. We get the kind of all services version. But we can also choose an individual services diagram. So all of the, the rendering tool agnostic stuff sits in the pipeline after all of that filtering and expression stuff has been done. So again, this gives you the flexibility to kind of combine all of these tools together. So that's option one. The, the, the question here is like, how do you deal with bigger, more complicated systems? Option one is craft up a smaller set of diagrams. The downside with this approach, of course, is you lose that holistic big picture view. So let me give you some other options. Now, how many tabs do I have open now? The answer is a lot. So let me go back here. So this is my all service example. And this is a traditional boxes and arrows diagram. If I click this, we get a little dynamic D3JS kind of force directed graph. So this is showing you the same thing, but it's showing in a different visual format, a much more succinct, concise format. It's explorable, navigatable, it's got tooltips, there's a quick find feature. So this is, again, is another really nice way to kind of understand a more complicated architecture. So maybe when someone says, can we put an architecture diagram together describing how complicated microservices architecture, maybe don't think about a traditional boxes and arrows diagram, but maybe think about something interactive. So that's option two. Option three is we can shut this one down and we can use the CLI tool to export the workspace uh, we just saw. So that's the services workspace.dsl um, minus formats ELO graph or ILO graph. Has anybody seen this tooling? So this is a cool little tool. If I open up um, this, so what I've just done is I've exported all the data in my workspace, in my model, to this quite frankly horrible looking YAML syntax. Um, please don't craft this up yourself by hand. Uh, the tooling does it for you. But if I open another tab and go to ilograph.com, uh, so this tooling has nothing to do with me, but I think it's a really nice tool. It's a way to explore um, a hierarchical data set, which the C4 model is essentially a hierarchical data set. I'm going to paste this in here. I'm going to click static structure, minimize that. Minimize that. So here's another variation. This is another way to visualize that same data set. And it's interactive. So we can kind of zoom around and click around and more or less detail is shown depending on the level of detail you're interested in and some of the relationships disappear and appear and that sort of thing. So that's kind of option three. It's a, it's a really nice tool to um, explore a hierarchical data set. So um, what do we want to show you now? So all of this tooling is open source. It's all built on the, the JVM. It's all built on Java. It's actually the, the DSL is a wrapper around a Java library I built a number of years ago. So that means what you can do is you can open up your favorite IDE. So I'm using uh, JetBrains IntelliJ here, idea. And I've added a, a dependency, um, a, a Gradle dependency 
to the Strutdriser DSL parser, and I've written myself a little program. And what I'm doing is I'm basically pointing to that DSL file we crafted up. I'm creating a new DSL parser. I'm parsing the DSL file. I'm grabbing the workspace. So this is the in-memory object graph. And I'm just going to iterate over it and say, print me out all the elements you find in the workspace. So if we do this, uh, and we can see, there we go. So now we've got a list of all of the things in that workspace. And you're like, well, that's really interesting. But what's the point? The point is what you can do is you can craft up a high-level DSL definition of maybe your people and your software systems. And then you write some code like this. You load, it, you load up the DSL version. And then you write some more codes to go and parse your AWS or your Azure environments to find running containers in Docker environments. And then you add that stuff into this model using the programmatic Java API. So now you've got the ability to craft up a high-level view of your, your architecture and supplement it from kind of real-time, real data points. So you get to kind of mix both worlds, which is quite cool. For those of you who are not in the Java ecosystem, uh, there's a bunch of other tooling that people have built. Again, most of this is open source. I have a .NET version. So I have here a copy of JetBrains Rider. There's a Strutdriser package on NuGet. And same thing, what I can do here, so there's no DSL parser written in c .net. So what I'm doing here is I'm pointing it to that JSON document. So I'm going to pull in that JSON document. There's a bunch of convenience methods to do that. And again, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, run over that thing, run over that workspace, and go find the elements. And again, you can do the same thing. You can now use uh, .NET Reflection to go and identify components through reflection or static analysis in your c .net code base, for example. So that's the custom integration point. And there's a, a couple of other versions of the Strutdriser um, libraries. There's one for TypeScript, one for PHP, one for Python, I think. So that's kind of the majority of the tooling. The last thing I want to show you is uh, this concept called workspace extension. So imagine you've got a group of um, teams, and you want to use this same tooling to craft up an architecture diagram across multiple teams. And you want to make sure you're reusing elements across multiple teams as definitions of the models. How do you do that? So the Strutdriser DSL supports a feature called workspace extension. So imagine I have a catalog, like a service or system catalog I've defined in a workspace.dsl file. So this might be representing all of the people and the systems within my groups or, or organization's system landscape. So here we have a person and a couple of software systems. And then maybe for software system one, which is owned by team one, they can, they can basically extend that system catalog. They can go and find uh, the, their system, which in this case is referenced by software system one, and they can insert all of the containers that they are building and are owning as a team, and all the links between these things, et cetera, et cetera. And they can craft up a bunch of diagrams specific to showcasing their solution. So now what we can do is we can boot up Strutdriser Lite against uh, another example, workspace extension. And I'm going to point it to system one. So I want to basically load the workspace for system one. So that's going to boot up Strutdriser Lite. I'm going to go back to Chrome, open up yet another tab, go here. So here's my uh, set of diagrams for system one. So now we can kind of zoom in. And of course, we can rinse and repeat, and we can craft up another set of diagrams for system two. So here's system two. We're extending that catalog again. We're finding system two. We're adding a link between the user and system two, crafting up a set of diagrams. So now every team can do this, and they can craft up their own extension of that kind of catalog, that model workspace. And now we have a consistent way to reuse users and software systems across all of this tooling. Now, the question becomes, well, how do we get the system landscape view? So if I start this up against a different folder, which is called system landscape. So here we have system landscape. And the system landscape uh, workspace is going to, again, extend the catalog and generate me a system, con uh, system landscape diagram, which looks like that. So this is just showing you three boxes and no arrows, because in that catalog is basically three elements and no arrows. Remember, all of the arrows are actually defined in the, in the extended workspaces. So how do we fix this problem? 
where you can either move all the relationships up to the system landscape um, workspace, or what you do is you go and load all of the child workspaces and figure out what the relationships are and then add them to this one. And that's what you can do. So the Structurizer DSL, because it's all running on a JVM, uh, there's a whole concept of scripts and plugins. So I created a plugin called Find Relationships plugin. And if I add that and reload this thing, now it's gone and loaded all those child workspaces. And now we have our system landscape diagram automatically crafted. So this is a really nice way to kind of centralize your system and people definitions and have all of the links um, kind of created by the teams who are really modeling those individual systems, which is quite cool. So that is, is really a kind of whistle-stop tool of all of the Structurizer tooling. Uh, if you want to get started, and remember, well, all of the stuff I've shown you is, is free and, and most of it is open source, you can go to structurizer.com slash DSL, and that gets you to the little demo page. Thank you very much.